My next guest needs no introduction. He's an American icon. One of the great ones, a bona fide hero of his day whose reputation precedes himself. He's been dubbed as America's mayor by the popular press. In 2002, <laughs> he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain. But before those starry-eyed nights of celebrity and fame, he started his career as a humble federal prosecutor with nerves of steel. During his tenure at New York Southern District, he has prosecuted dozens of high-profile individuals, ranging from organized crime figures to politicians. He's no stranger to tough battles and high stakes. As the mayor of New York, he cleaned up the tough streets. He led by example during the perilous September 11th attacks on the Twin Towers when his city needed him the most. He has even beat cancer. Most recently, he was called back to public service by President Donald Trump as personal advisor to the administration. Today, he manages a boutique New York law firm, Giuliani Partners. He champions for truth, justice, and the American way. Please welcome the Honorable Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Welcome, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? <laughs> so I'll get right into it. I know we, uh, we have a time frame. Um, Your Honor, during your tenure at the New York Southern District, you prosecuted all kinds of criminal cases perpetrated by Wall Street bankers, hedge funds, and the likes, white collar crimes. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? Well, I mean, I, my experience is that I began, after being a law student and a law clerk, I began right away in the U.S. Attorney's Office, right from the very bottom. I tried every imaginable kind of case there was, um, and then I had the honor of being the head of the U.S. Attorney. I was the U.S. Attorney for, for five, five, six years. So I've seen it right at the street level and right at the very top. So I guess I feel very comfortable with understanding law enforcement. Probably I understand that better than I do anything else. I've had more experience with it than anything else. Why are these guys so hard to catch? Well, I mean, it depends. Uh, first of all, they're trying not to be, right? So these are Largely, particularly when you're talking about federal crimes and white collar crimes, and even many forms of drug dealing and, and uh, other kinds of, you're, you're talking about very intelligent people usually. These are not, you're not, they're not the usual just like street gangs. Right. They're, they're people who are, let's say, extraordinarily successful business people who also decide to go crooked, or they're people that could have been very successful, but they've decided to get involved in money laundering or they, get involved in drug dealing. So the point is that these are not just dumb people that just go commit a crime. They, they don't want to go to prison. They don't, they don't want to be interrupted. So they work really hard to conceal it. They, they'll, they'll do it in ways that's hard to find. They'll do it with people that aren't going to, uh, aren't going to inform on them. So it's always, a, it's always obstacles in, put, in pulling down one of these operations, unless you just get damn lucky and they just, you know, end up right out in the open. Sure, sure. Um, so the AMC GME saga is a good example of hedge funds running amok. Um, you know, what do you think needs to change in terms of American jurisprudence? What laws? And is it at the federal level? Uh, just give, give me uh, give me your thoughts on that. Well, I don't think the laws uh, need, need to be changed much. I mean, I, I always thought inside a trading could be better defined. It's a little bit too, the, the whole concept of, not, not the classic inside of trading, but when you start when you start getting further removed from just a pure person who works for a company, is on a board, gets information under very, very secure circumstances or circumstances they have a great deal of duty. When you start having somebody heard something in a, in, in a restaurant, who heard it in a store, who heard all those circles around it, you, th those can be better defined, at least for criminal purposes. But uh, it isn't so much the laws, it's the application of the laws. Uh, first of all, it took a long time for anyone to want to prosecute white collar crime. It was kind of like, oh, that's not really crime. And then we went through a period of time when I think we were overzealous in prosecuting white collar crime. It was like we couldn't see the difference between murder and white collar crime. I mean, white collar crime is terrible. It's awful and money, whatever. But taking lives is a heck of a lot more dangerous than that. So I think white collar crime first was ignored. Then it was overdone and exaggerated. Now I tend to think we're at a good balance. Problem that white collar crime runs into is the problem that all crime runs into. The present Justice Department is not a justice department. It's a, it's a political uh, prosecution uh, operation of the Democrat Party. So that distorts all justice. Uh, you know, a Republican can get caught for 
the old federal statute for deliberately giving the weather wrong and go to prison for 25 years and a Democrat could take $30 million in bribes and not get prosecuted. Mm, that's very interesting. Do you, do you think to some degree financial regulators uh, are protecting big finance, the big banks? It seems like there's an incestuous nature to the whole thing. And SEC chiefs and, and, and you know, Fed chairmen are trying to to jockey themselves into a, a position for the future. So they're not ratting out their buddies and such. Amiga Nostra, right? That's a, that's a good, that's a very, very good and, and difficult question to answer. And the answer to it is sometimes yes and sometimes no. I mean, there, I think there are a lot of regulators that are just pure people and pure, they're, they're there for one purpose, one purpose alone, which is to regulate fairly and, and industriously and correctly. But then I, and then I think there are some of them on the edge completely who are who are maybe corrupted by the size and the wealth and the influence of of of, um, of these of these people and but and, and then there are some that are just institutionalists mm. so they don't uh, they don't do it on they don't do it for money and they don't do it corruptly but they do it because of their biases or prejudices so i do think there is a too much of a cozying up of of the regulators to uh, to the industry in the case of the financial industry, right? Because money is money after all in America. Yeah, money is money, and, and uh, first of all, you, they, even if even if you don't think about it in terms of money, they're sort of the they're sort of the standard, and they think it's hard to believe they're wrong, and it's hard. Then there could also be a certain amount of cowardice. You don't want to go against them because you want a job there. So yeah, yeah, that doesn't mean it happens all the time. It doesn't mean everybody's like that. It just means that that's an issue to, to worry about. So earlier this year, or actually earlier last year, uh, AMC and Jimmy were squeezed and we had a bunch of hedge funds get caught um, doing some kind of shifty stuff, Robin Hood. Um, and, and it came into the question, the, the question came up is, are they naked short selling? Are they doing anything illicit that uh, we need to start regulating with? Um, and it's still very, I mean, we, we believe in the retail investor who, community. Who was that? Uh, Citadel Securities, Jane huh? Street, uh, Simplex, all those guys that were involved in the uh, the squeeze, the, the first gamma squeeze, as we said, um, they they were essentially caught. They somehow, you know, lawyered up and they, 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 they somehow got out of it. But it's still happening. It's still going on. You know, what kind of advice would you give to retail investors like myself uh, who try to protect themselves? Because currently, as it seems, uh, we, the, we have been buying the dip doing everything we're not supposed to be doing. And um, we're at that point where when this thing pops, it's creating systemic risk across the market. So I guess my question would be, what would you tell retail investors of the future when dealing with these predators? Well, I say you have to be very careful and you have to do the best you can to do, do some uh, due diligence. If you have an advisor, it's really helpful. If you can have a third party who has expertise in the area and therefore can give you not just um, third-party knowledge, but third-party perspective uh, on what on whether this looks like a major risk that you're taking. And uh, look, I mean, there's no no form of investing from the simplest to the most complicated that doesn't have some degree of risk involved. The question is, can you minimize it? Can you exhaust it to some extent? Find out about it, and then put it in the proper perspective. Do you think that? Um the big banks should be regulated more and, and, and be more what, uh, the, which, the, big, the big banks, should they be uh, regulated more thoroughly or should we just let them do what they need to do for the sake of, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know that they need any more designated regulations. Do I think they should be more carefully examined? Yes, I do. I'm not sure that this is a case of there's not enough regulations as there aren't enough people to do it. In an adequate way, given the complexity of. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Do you believe that um, you know white collar crime, you know, perpetrated by the hedge funds, individual hedge funds, smaller hedge funds, you know, it's as if the SEC doesn't take it seriously enough, you know, because these guys are writing, letting, sending notes, emails, and no responses from the SEC, and it's very frustrating. Like, what would you say? How, how do we fix that? more accountability yeah i would say the only way to do that is to let the sec know from the point of view of the president who after all even though it's, it's an independent agency it still has it still has uh, uh existence within the executive branch 
that he expects a lot more performance out of them on quicker or faster. They don't have to always, they don't, they, they don't have to worry about being right or wrong. They just have to worry about doing, doing the right thing mm -hmm. to helping mm -hmm. people. So um, during your time, do you have any memorable moments dealing with the financial world uh, on Wall Street as a U.S. attorney that you can share? <laughs> oh, yeah, I got plenty. I mean, if you could talk about Milken, Boski, you can talk about the times I would go down to the floor and open it and they would all wonder, what, what is he doing here? Is he coming here to arrest me? Um, <laughs> I tell you, yeah, I mean, I had I had um, I had a lot of experience. And and uh, a lot of them have a sense of humor, even the ones you're investigating. It's a little different than it is a little different than the investigations of organized crime and and uh, terrorists and things like that. It's a little calmer and I mean, it's a lot calmer. Mm -hmm. And um, but it's still an area in which, you know, tremendous damage can be done to people, people, particularly nowadays with people having, you know, a great deal of their future we could say wealth if we wanted i guess but yeah. a great deal of it is tied up in banks and in ira in, in um in iras and so there's a real there's a real interest on their part do you in think, having things done in an orderly way your honor do you think the uh the the, the individual retail investors guys like me should have more freedoms to to because to, i feel as if we're in this state where it, it's like a nanny state uh, you know certain certain parties in the united states say, like, hey you know what these guys, uh, you don't want to let retail cut loose. They might, quote, gamify stocks and, and stuff like that. And that's really, I, I've got a master's, I have two master's degrees. And, and to tell so when somebody in government says, well, you might gamify it. Well, I'm, I'm in the industry. I'm, I'm, I have two master's in finances. Why couldn't I be able to do that? Like, what, do you think it should be deregulated for, for, for uh, civilians, you know, just non-finance folks to, to make money on the market? You mean in general? In general. The basic, the basic criminal regulation of the market is not overly uh, oppressive. Uh, and, it's, and it's applied with a fair degree of discretion. Where, where you could use a tremendous amount of cutback and regulation are all of the filing regulations and analysis regulations and that, uh, that on, on the civil side, the SEC puts you, puts you through. That's for... for um, you know, for, 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 most, for most people, they're willing to go through that so long as it's being done in good faith and, and people are trying to get it done as quickly as possible. But very often, the government almost seems to be harassing you with the amount of regulation they put you through. And so much of the regulation, it's about things that really don't matter. I mean, they don't focus in completely on the risk factors uh, that might have to do with illness or the risk factors that might have to do with financial Financial fraud, they're just broad, one, regu one regulation after another, one regulation after another. Very, very damaging. I think it damages our economy as much or more than taxes. You know, I see that uh, the majority of, you know, the regulations that are out there against uh, retail investors, you know, brought on by SEC and the Fed has been to deter us and to, you know, get, make us, uh, put us in a corner by ourselves you know, put us in that corner and not allow us to participate freely. And they keep using that word gamification, especially during the short squeeze. You know, but do you believe that, you know, we should have, the, I mean, I feel as if we, we don't have enough power as, as retail. I mean, we're not even talking about the banks. We're talking about just retail investors, you or I, if we, just to get on a, a phone app to buy shares, you know? Well, I mean, retail, retail investors are not uh, uh, organized in a powerful enough way to have influence beyond just their numbers. And there are so many others, so many other organizations that are situated in that way, that comparatively, that's where you're losing. I mean, they're all, they're all moving ahead now, you know, in one form or another, co covered by g gambling and additional resources that'll bring in. You were, uh, you're, you're, um, so you have to take a look, you have to take a look at the value of the regulations Mm. And are they, I mean, there are regulations that are actually enormously helpful. Do they have value? Most of them are, most of them don't. And when they don't have value, then they should be ameliorated or removed. And I don't think you have, meaning people on the outside, the necessary power to do that. Unless you're a very big company and you're organized with the right lobbying group. 
which is not right. It shouldn't be that way. The, the inequity of a regulation should be determined by the regulation itself, not that it's affecting rich companies as opposed to poor companies. That's interesting. So what do you think, you know, we're, we're in this precipice uh, where AI is coming into, to, 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 you know, into mainstream collective thought. It's going to influence technology. It's going to influence the market in, in many different ways. You know, what's next in terms of regulatory stuff that should be coming out? Uh, are we going to let the robots handle everything? Do you think it's wise for us to you do know, that? No, I'm going to tell you what I think uh, 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 until we get through this woke and racist era. It's going to be about, you know, substantial amount of the, of, of the focus of the federal government, whether it's within the White House or one of the many agencies, including those that regulate in your area, the, they're all going to try to outdo each other with messages that I would call Marxist uh, messages. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I mean, they, can, they can go way, way afield to attacking religion, attacking families. What they're trying to do is break down your love and joy and happiness being a um, an American and a New Yorker, which happens to people at Christmas time. Oh, sure. I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. somebody else uh, made a comment about that as well. Um, so that's that's fine. Let me ask you, uh, and we'll wrap this up right here. You know, Thank you. Uh, what what needs to change right now with the way we in with the market in terms of the actual market itself, one needs to change for the better that we survive China, we survive all the other predatory players have to get out. Okay. I mean, you always need, I believe in a free market. Uh, there's no question about it, but I think a free market has to also be a police market in the sense that it has to be fair. Um, and it has to be responsive to problems and, and, and issues. It's not, you, ju you just don't get together and no regulations, no rules. We're just going to trade. That would be unrealistic given human nature. Right. Do, do you think that um, retail should be empowered? You know, should oh, the Fed... sure. Absolutely. It's a very important part of our economy. It's a very important part of our way of life. Sure. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think that ought to do it. Uh, congratulations on granddaughter Grace. Tremendous. <laughs> tremendous. Absolutely amazing. I love that. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, You're a good man. I enjoyed it. I, I appreciate you coming on. I hope you come back one day soon. No, Courtney, uh, I, it was a good interview. It was fun. Uh, also, well, uh, I'm going to actually uh, post a link for Andrew's uh, uh, campaign run in, in New York. We'll put that on the bottom in the description. And, good. Uh, oh, that's nice. I'll enjoy that. He'll enjoy that. Oh, we, we love you. We love you on the show. So we hope you come back. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Miss Maria. I appreciate everything, you guys. Thank you so much. We uh, are yeah, we'll very good. You guys thank soon. you. Thank Take you. Care. Bye, Your Honor. Thank you.